Item number, SCP-6087. Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. Currently, all known instances of SCP-6087-A are contained in individual cells located in Site-24's C-Wing and are to receive weekly counseling sessions with Drs. Isadora Hill and Colin Eastland. All suspected cases are to be investigated by Mobile Task Force Pi-1, City Slickers, with confirmed instances transported to Site-24 and Class B amnestics administered to all witnesses. Research into the origin of SCP-6087 is ongoing. Description SCP-6087 is a localized phenomenon occurring in Great Britain, affecting children between the ages of 5 and 14 years old. Those affected, designated SCP-6087-A, will spontaneously become incapable of exercising any form of vocal communication. Medical analysis has revealed no physical explanation for this condition, and in most cases, the effect appears to be permanent. All Foundation attempts at reversing SCP-6087's influence, including intensive speech therapy and laryngeal transplant, have thus far been unsuccessful. Studies suggest that children prone to behaviors such as frequent lying and use of disparaging and or explicit language, particularly towards adults, are primarily susceptible to SCP-6087's effects. In all known occurrences, these properties manifested whilst the victim was sleeping, typically between the hours of 1am and 4am GMT. Over the following days, most instances will report mild to moderate throat pain, as well as an unpleasant taste, usually likened to that of expired meat, which may persist for up to a week afterwards. Additionally, several instances of SCP-6087-A have noted the presence of numerous houseflies, musca domestica, and insect larvae on their bedspread immediately after their alteration. The significance of this remains unknown. Additionally, all SCP-6087-A are subject to periodic auditory hallucinations, which typically occur whilst the subject is alone, and manifest in the form of faint cries and moans. In most cases, these hallucinations have been found to increase in frequency and intensity over time. There are currently five known cases of SCP-6087-A instantly regaining their ability to speak whilst in Foundation custody. All such occurrences took place between 5 and 10 years after entering containment, and coincided with the total cessation of all auditory hallucinations. However, in all cases, each subject was found to vocalize using a pitch, tone, and regional accent that they did not recognize as their own. Further research is ongoing. Precisely when SCP-6087 first manifested is unknown, although archive documents inherited from Her Majesty's Foundation for the Secure Containment of the Paranormal, or HMFSCP. Footnote 1. Foundation Precursor Organization, active between 1738 and 1918. Suggests that containment procedures were first implemented at some point in the early 19th century. Addendum. SCP-6087's discovery was roughly concurrent with the publication of the earliest known literary reference to The Voice Taker, a mythical character originating in English folklore. The following is an extract from the revised edition of Of Myths and Monsters, 1910, by British historian and folklorist Horace Greenblatt, which contains one of the most detailed accounts of The Voice Taker currently in Foundation possession, provided by the Department of Mythology and Folkloristics. The Voice Taker Depictions of the phantom known as the Voice Taker, scourge to all wicked and unruly children, have remained remarkably consistent across the centuries. The unsightly revenant is described as a tall, festering figure, wearing a thick beard, made not of hair, but comprised of countless, ever-swarming flies and maggots. In life, the Voice Taker, who is given no Christian name, is said to have been born with a mouth much too big for his face, a deformity which most tellings attribute to his gossiping mother. As a result of this disfigurement, his cries throughout infancy were so loud and frequent that they caused the walls to shake, and regularly kept his parents awake well into the small hours. The boy's father, fatigued and desperate, sought the counsel of a learned cleric, well versed in the ancient craft of alchemy. The priest provided him with a rare tonic of golden hue, previously utilized by a certain unspoken sect of silent monks in the Far East. 
This potion, the priest asserted, would silence the boy's screams for a year and a day, allowing his parents some much-needed rest. While the old priest specified that merely three drops were necessary for the desired result, the boy's father, skeptical of the elixir's potency, insisted on forcing the entire concoction down his son's oversized mouth. This had the unfortunate effect of leaving the boy permanently mute and earning him much mockery from his peers. Years passed, and the boy was soon put to work on his family farm, until late in the winter of his 19th year, when his life was tragically cut short. Whilst wandering the forest in search of firewood, he tripped and fell down an old stone well, which had long ago fallen to disuse. Although the townsfolk searched for many weeks afterwards, because the boy was incapable of shouting for help, he was never rescued, swiftly succumbing to the elements. As he could not be afforded a Christian burial, the voice taker's spirit remains earthbound, cursed to spend the ages wandering the mortal plane. The voice taker's experience has given him a strong appreciation for the value of speech, and an even stronger disdain for children who take theirs for granted by shouting, lying, and disrespecting their elders. Disobedient youth are warned that if they refuse to correct this behavior, the voice taker will visit them in the night, where they will awaken to the pungent stench of earth and decay. Upon catching a gory glimpse of the maggot-bearded monster looming before them, the victim will inevitably open their mouth to scream. Yet before sound can escape, the silent specter strikes, extending one bony arm down the unruly child's throat, and stealing their voice away before stuffing it into his burlap sack. Once his bag has reached its fill, the voice taker deposits his stolen treasure where their owners can never retrieve them at the bottom of the same well where he lost his life. It is said that during clear nights, his victims' voices, which in their disembodied state are incapable of producing all but the most primal screams and moans, can be heard as faint echoes on the wind. In some rare cases, once seven years have passed, the voice taker may decide to return articulation to his victims, providing they have exhibited exemplary behavior over the preceding years. However, as this creature is noted for its careless tendencies, voices returned to their owners rarely match that which was originally stolen. Further study has confirmed that over 90% of SCP-6087-A have exhibited varying degrees of familiarity with this legend, suggesting that SCP-6087's anomalous effects may be at least partially infohazardous in nature. Efforts to eradicate the voice taker from the European cultural zeitgeist have thus far proven successful. Thank you guys so much for watching, and a huge thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon. Special shout out to level 4 patrons Lesby Friends, Alexis Zagrate, Everborn, and Joe Light. And a huge shout out to level 5 patron Doomsday LLC Prince and Design, and level 6 patron Totally Not a Femboy. If you would like to see your name at the end of my videos, see my videos early, and get some other cool perks, head on over to patreon.com slash drmaxwell, link in the description.